What's going on guys? So today I'm gonna finally do my trailing air bushings and I think a couple of you guys have been waiting for this and today's the day. I got the next three days off so I'm gonna be doing it today. The trailer brushing and then tomorrow get another alignment but just for my toe, not my camera. And then the weekend I'm gonna clean up my garage. I need to make space in my garage so I could put that car in here when I um, leave for Japan. So the car's gonna be stuck in here for pretty much when I go to Japan. And so this is what it looks like, or what the PCI spherical trailing rubber chains come with. So that's that. This goes onto your chassis, and then it comes with the hardware and the plates. So they're they come with four plates. Reason is is because you're only using two, and also these two with the two holes. If I'm correct, these are. Uh, if you have ABS, but since my car doesn't have ABS, we're going to be using these ones. And thanks to PCI, they give you plates for um, was it marking off where uh, you need a drill. So those two, and then after that, this goes in there, and it should go like that, just like that. All right, I am excited to use this and. Some of you guys would probably be like, why are you using spherical for daily? They clunk. Yes, they clunk. I'm used to it because my spherical ASR and links, they clunk and all that. But it's honestly whatever. You get used to it after some time. And yeah. So the easiest part of doing this whole thing is, of course, taking off the old bushing. Well, actually, is that the easiest part? I guess the easiest part is taking off the wheel because you have to take off the whole trailing arm. Well, there's, there's two ways. One is... You could let the trailer arm hang and you can hit it out, but since I don't have a trailer arm press or whatever uh, to extract the trailer arm bushing that's currently in my car, I'm taking off my whole trailer arm and then putting it down on the ground with some wood and then hit it out with the hammer. There's a lot of ways, but luckily like where I live in California, I could easily hit it out with the hammer, but I think if you live in like like the east coast, the all the rust or whatever will be make, it will make it a lot harder to take out the trailer arm bushing if I'm correct. But let me just start off by Oh yeah, I'm gonna get rid of these fenders by the way, heads up. I am gonna take off the wheel and then show you guys what to take off in the meantime. Every time I make a video, I'm just throw these T's in there like, fuck, how can you not like love them? All right, but once you have the wheel off and this, you guys been around my channel for a long time or like for like a while, not a couple months now. I've done a red disc conversion now. I'm about to show you guys uh, if it's still pretty much intact because I still get questions about the Scarebird conversion kit. If you guys haven't seen that, I will link it up right now. Check that out. This is my DIY or not DIY but uh, rid of this conversion without replacing the whole trailer on. This is still the original EK trailer on, not an SI one, the one that came with the car. Most people like always wonder like how do you learn how to work on a car? It's really simple, like you just look at it. Like what bolt do you need to take off the trailer arm bushing or the trailer arm in general? You take this off, or you can take the two from the frame. Of course, you have to take off the rear calipers and uh, the e brake cable because you're gonna have to slide it through uh, to pull out the whole trailer arm. And of course, down here, you don't really have to take this off, but I do it anyways. And then right here for the LCAs. And then you got two more bolts under here for the trailer arm bushing, and one right there for the toe. Now that's the toe. And what I would do is mark where it is. When you put it all back together, make sure you put it back to where it is. So your car isn't like all squirrely and shit when you drive to the alignment shop. Because when you do do this, you do have to take off the bow for the toe, uh, toe arm. So it will ruin your alignment. So get a alignment right after. But you have to take that off. So it's literally like one, two, three, four, five bolts. And since I do have a rid of this conversion, if you have a drum, you're gonna have to take off the brake line that goes behind the brake cylinder on the rear. But luckily for me, I redid the conversion, so I just have to take off this for the e-brake cable and drag the caliper over and zip tight on here since I do have stainless steel brake lines. And yeah, it should just all come out. Yeah, I have good news for you guys. Look, I got a tripod. Believe it or not, I had a tripod for a long time. I just never used it because on my other camera, it's too heavy for this tripod. This tripod's like a generic, well not really generic, but it just didn't really hold my uh, five, four pound camera good enough, so I've hit, I have a tripod now that I can use. 
What do you know? I have my tripod. Damn, just like that. So what I'm gonna do first is break off all the 14s. So the LCA, the strut I'll probably leave, um, the camera kit, and the trailer arm bushings, and the tow arm. Or actually, before I actually do that, I should take off my caliper. So glad the weather's like this. Before it was, a few days ago, it was so hot. And if you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, I normally um, upload every like three, four days. But I missed an upload yesterday because I was too focused or too fed up with the heat. So. Like for the RC cars. Like that. Don't lose this. Pull that pin out. And I, what I like doing most of the time when I work on my car, I put all the bolts back into where they go so you don't lose them. Take that out. And then the key brake came off, it should pop right out. That. All right, so you bring the cables out, power is out, and the brake line still attached to this. So if you have a rear dispersion, it's easier to do this because you don't have to take off the brake line compared to doing the when you have drums. And I'm taking off the caliper bracket right now, which is what bolts up to the scarebird bracket. Brackets out. And I need to grab a zip tie for the caliper. Take the rotor off. Alright. And these two do come with the scarebird bracket kit. And if you guys look at this, so here's my hub. And this is the scarebird bracket. Now all of these bolts are still in where I put them and I will check them since I did take it apart but this bracket that Scarebird developed for the EKs works like a champ it just you don't have the dust shoot or anything probably because I didn't have it but overall um yeah that's what the Scarebird bracket looks like and I'm just gonna hang this up real quick and then uh we're gonna remove the rest to drop the trailing arm out and then shoot the bushing out but yep Scarebird bracket if you haven't seen the video check it out I zip tied up my caliper and if you look right here, there's a bolt. This is for the e-brake cable. So I just take that off. And it's just a simple 10. Uh, okay, I'll do that when I, when I get to it. And then now we're going to take off those two and the toe. And after that, that's when we'll start working on taking off the LCA bolt and the camera kit. You could take this off, but I mean, this or those two. You're right, I'll just do one. It's easier and then I'll have to take it off or, or take out the whole thing. You break cables out. You can use power tools, but I feel like power tools like you just get lazy. Like so I pretty much got the trail bushings loose. So I'll take them all the way out now. Believe it or not, this is actually my first time doing trail bushings. Make sure you don't mix any of your bolts up. I had to take off the last uh, trailer bushing. I already broke it loose, so it should come out like nothing. And I think before I do that, I'm gonna break the camera kit and the LCA. Was it broken loose? No. We take off the bolt on the trailer. It just adds up to the trailer on this way bit. This is the last bolt that's holding everything in and it should just come out. So careful. Alright. Alright, it should be out.
Okay. All the bolts, all the hardware is off. Now, you're just gonna pull it out and let me just push it over. It's still in there, so I hit it out. See that. Whoa. There you guys go. Now let me bring you guys in my garage. Now the whole trailer arm's off. And you see, there's a bolt right here that you guys should take off, just take off the whole trailer without having to remove this, but you can't, because on the EK, the chassis says close to it, so we would take this bolt off, it was get close to the frame and you won't be able to pull it out and it'll become a bitch. So that's why I take it off from the hair. Trail line bushing. It's where my shot. Oh wait, there's weight on it right now. Here, let me see, super flimsy. It's cracked. And then scare bird bracket. Still looking mint. That's good. So now I'm gonna hit this out using a socket and a hammer. The bigger the hammer you have, the better, you, the better it could, uh, or the easier it will come out. There you go. And then you're gonna use a socket. If you guys have been watching my, uh, when I did the swap and stuff and doing the axle seals, it's the same method. So you're hit around it and then it'll slowly gradually come out. So, yep. So we're gonna tap around it. One thing I want to apologize for is I didn't record it, but I was actually having a bit of a hard time trying to take it out from the outside this way. So I started to try hitting it from the back and it literally took me like 10 hits. And it's still in there, but you gotta flip it around for you guys. You can see that the bushing is pushing out. So what I think was, I don't know if this is the original one or not, but when they replaced it, they went in this way. So easier to hit it out is that way. I've seen people hit it out that way, but I guess it, de it all depends. So, and I was not trying to go around a tool. Now, since that thing is literally almost out. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. The bushing came out. You guys wanna make sure that you remember where the bushing goes. So it was like this. All right. So the long end goes inward. Short end is outside. Yeah, that took 10 minutes, but if I knew from hitting from the back, it would probably would have took like two, three minutes. I literally barely hit that shit with the hammer. But that's how you do it without a tool, because I mean, you'd rather use all the tools that you have at home so you don't have to go and rent anything. And I'm just showing you guys that you could, guys could do it without the tool. or not have to lay the template down. The PCI spherical uh, trailer brushes do come with instructions, so if you guys don't know how to do this, the instructions do come with it if you do end up buying the same exact Pushing. No ABS, so we're gonna be using this one with only two holes. Oh, piece of shit machine. Oh, here's the old one. Wobbles. Now it comes to us actually putting this in, which is fairly simple. Use the plate that they give you. If you have ABS, then you need the other hole, but I don't. So it's actually. It's in here. Okay. And what I like doing is using a punch when you're gonna be drilling through metal. The reason why I use this is so when you're using the drill bit and drilling, it doesn't slide. With this, you punch it and then the drill bit will go straight to where the punch is. And just go, the one that's a bit smaller than, of course, the hole. Get it centered. There we go, one's done. Alright, now to get the drill bit size, even though the bolts are this fucking big, I normally would start off with a smaller drill bit and then move up. I think 3 eighths is the size of the bolt. Yeah, roughly 3 eighths. But we're gonna start off small first and then slowly go up, so we'll just make sure that we're going or it's uh, the right size.
and make sure you have metal drilling bits. It makes it a lot easier compared to using wood drill bits. There we go, and that centered. That is why you should use a punch. Uh, what size is this actually? This uh, it's a one eighth punch by snap on, but you don't need a snap on. Just use like Craftsman or something that you have. Now to expand the holes bigger to fit this, because if you look at it, of course it won't fit. So this is a three eighths, which I have right over here. But I'm gonna go up to a one fourth and then go to three eighths, so I don't make the hole at all fucking weird. They fit right in. Got to clean up the metal shavings a bit. And wear gloves. I've, I had a, I guess, metal splinters before. It sucks ass. So that's in. There's one. There's two. Wow, they look really nice. All right, and then, where is mine? These go right behind it, but if we do that, we need this plate. This plate goes right behind it, upwards. There's a hole that, that's what she said. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> this goes over here. There we go. Like an idiot. Now to put the washer right behind. And screw it in there with the hardware that they give you. One. The other one with the washer. I really miss like making like videos like this. And honestly, I think my videos back in the day, I was like, more like their own shit. All right, now I get a hex key, tighten it down, and then we'll get we'll get back to installing this back onto the car. But that's what they look like. Just like that. Good, right? All done at home. No special tools needed. Just a hammer and a socket, and a drill with metal drill bits. Yeah, and most of my videos that I do like DIYs and stuff, I try to make it so that it can base it off of like how you guys work on cars. Like I have power tools, but I don't use power tools because not everybody has power tools and I actually like working on it, like use my own like hands and stuff to gain strength or work out supposedly. But this is all because a lot of people like they don't have tools and all that. So just buy yourself a tool set from Craftsman or something at Sears. Get a drill bit, drill it, and you know, you don't need no fancy drill or anything, I just have a regular Dewalt drill. So, yeah, so I'm gonna tighten that down, and then we'll bring it back over to the car and slap it all together. There is something going on here, it fills me up, up, brings me to tears. So the trailer arm bushings in all the way. That's what it looks like. I already tightened these uh, two trailer arm bushings bolts or trailer arm bolts down. So those are tied all the way. And then tie rod bolts already tied all the way. Also, I put it to where I saw it before. And uh, yeah, so it's all in. This is tight and pretty nice. Now I just got to put this tie this down, tie this down. And then that's when I'm gonna put the caliper and everything back on. Uh, but before I do that, I need to jack up the 
um, trailer arm or the yeah the whole assembly so there's preload on it and you guys probably seen you guys been watching my old videos back in the day you guys probably seen me doing this a lot now I just have to put everything back on and then um, I'll get back to or get back with you guys then everything's back on now to put the wheel back on and do the other side which I'm not gonna show you guys I probably will do the other side and show you guys how I did the bushing because um, there's a point of seeing this all over again and it's the same exact thing on the other side the other side is a bit easier because the exhaust is not in the way all right so we're back with the driver side and in the same way as how I removed this one because the other way I was hitting from the, uh, the outside and it was too hard so we're doing from the inside which is a lot easier well let me get some my wood at I'm gonna hit it I kind of <laughs> fucked up the bushy more. Now it's completely broken. But um, that one took a little bit longer, like another like 10 seconds. But that's how you do it. And yeah, that's how. Now I'm just gonna clean it and install the new one. Oh, drill it too. Sometimes as pads, I cleaned up a bit, washed my hands, washed my arms, washed my face, and uh, it's all on now. I just have to go get alignment, which I most likely will do tomorrow after I make my trip to Newman's garage. Uh, but yeah, it's all it's all back. Torque the wheels down and all that. I popped my hood earlier because I went to Instagram live. And, yeah, I just went a little bit liveish, no, Instagramish or Instagram liveish. What the fuck am I saying? But uh, here's the older ones. I'm gonna throw them away and the way I did it you could technically do it on um, new like regular bushings like these also you just have to tap around the corner like how you're doing like an axle, axle seal or any type of seal that you put on your car you just tap around it go in circular motions and you will eventually get the new bushing in but um, I didn't have to do that because I got the spherical ones which you just bolt right up but hopefully you guys like this video this is like I feel like me recording this video today was how I used to do videos back in the day. If you guys are OG subscribers, you guys will definitely know how I used to uh, do my uh, how-to videos and DIYs. But um, now, time to take a shower, um, grab some food, and start editing this video. I'm uploading it the same day. And if you guys got this far in the video, thank you for watching, like always. And Hot. But all right, like, comment, subscribe, this like up to you guys, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully you guys understand how to do this. It's really not that hard. It's really simple, and yeah. So peace out, guys, and see you guys in the next video. And sorry for the one day late upload. So peace out. Bye.